the Sharangama Sutra. Enlightenment in Mahayana Buddhism consists in transmuting the mind into the great mirror wisdom. And so the Sharangama Sutra points directly at the mind, which when stirred by the first thought, creates the basic illusion of an ego and splits the whole into subject and object. In this sutra, the Buddha began by stripping Ananda of this attachment to the illusory body and mind before revealing the one mind. To teach how this one mind can be realized, he asked 25 bodhisattvas to describe the different methods by which each had attained enlightenment. Avalokiteshvara's method was judged the most suitable for mankind today. The Buddha disclosed the cause of transmigration through the six worlds and of the attainment of the four saintly plains, describing these ten regions in some detail. Finally, he detailed and warned against clinging to the various mental states experienced when practicing the Sharangama Samadhi. We in the West know of the creation according to the Bible, but readers will now find in the sutra how man and his world came into being as taught by the Buddha. Preface We take refuge in the Buddha. We take refuge in the Dharma. We take refuge in the Sangha. We take refuge in the Triple Chim. We take refuge in the Triple Gem within ourselves. This important sermon contains the essence of the Buddha's teachings, and as foretold by him, will be the first sutra to disappear in the Dharma ending age. It reveals the law of causality relating to both delusion and enlightenment, and teaches the methods of practice and realization to destroy forever the roots of birth and death. It aims at breaking up alaya, the store consciousness, whose three characteristics are self-evidencing, perception, and form. By means of the three meditative studies of noumenon, which is immaterial of phenomenon, which is unreal, and of the mean, which is inclusive of both, and leads to the all-embracing Sharangama Samadhi, which is the gateway to perfect enlightenment, and reveals the nature of the Tathagata store of one reality. In the practice of the Sharangama Samadhi to wipe out the store consciousness, we should know that the latter has been under delusion for a very long time, and that it is very difficult to transmute into the great mirror wisdom. Hence the Buddha uses two of its characteristics, perception and form, to explain the falseness of both so that we can relinquish our attachment to them and break its first characteristic, self-evidencing. The illusion of form, which includes the body and mind, made of the five aggregates, and the visible world is tackled first by returning each of its aspects to where it arises to prove its unreality. And then the illusion of perception is wiped out by revealing its essence, or alaya, which is like a second moon, also an illusory creation. Hence the Buddha says, when seeing perceives seeing, seeing is not seeing, seeing strays from seeing, seeing cannot reach it, which Han Shan aptly interprets thus. When the absolute seeing perceives the essence of seeing, the former is not the latter, which still differs from it. How then can false seeing reach that absolute seeing? Absolute seeing is likened to the real moon in the sky. The essence of seeing to a second moon seen by bad eyes, and false seeing to the moon's reflection in water. In other words, the true moon stands for basic enlightenment, the second moon for alaya, or the essence of seeing which is close to the true moon, and the moon in the water for perception, an illusion which is very far from the real moon. As to alaya, which is the unenlightened aspect of self-nature, we cannot lightly dismiss it as non-existent, and this is why the Buddha avoids mentioning it for, as he says in his gatha, old habits flow like torrents in Elias subtle consciousness. Since the real yet unreal can create confusion, I have refrained from revealing it to you. In answer to Ananda's request for instruction on the three meditative studies, Samatha, Samapati, Dhyana, the Buddha reveals the light of the Sharangama Samadhi from the host position of the all-embracing one mind in its state of passionless imperturbability. Readers should not regard this revelation as some kind of miracle which cannot be proved by science, and which should be dismissed as nonsense. As mentioned in the book, The Secrets of Chinese Meditation, all serious students of the Dharma experience this state of brightness as soon as they succeed in stilling their minds in the practice of dhyana. This, this absolute mind, as revealed by the Buddha, has three great characteristics. Greatness of its essence greatness of its essence or substance, called the Dharmakaya, greatness of its attributes or manifestations, perfect in wisdom and mercy, called Sambhogakaya, and the greatness of its functions, perfectly converting all living beings to the right path, called Nirmanakaya. 
Instead of cognizing the true mind, we cling to the illusory body and mind made of the five aggregates as an ego. With sense data in the surrounding world as it as its objective field of activity. This coarse attachment to ego and things, dharma, arises from discrimination and pertains to both the sixth and seventh consciousnesses. The subtle attachment to ego and dharma is inborn. It arises from the seventh consciousness, clinging to alaya's perception as an inner ego and its realization of sainthood as dharma. Only after wiping out both the discriminative and inborn attachments can we reach the source of the one mind and attain enlightenment. Hence the three meditative studies which aim at destroying both coarse and subtle clingings. It is much easier to relinquish the discriminative clinging that the inborn attachment and few practicers succeed in overcoming the latter. This pass is the most difficult one to get through, and only one or two percent of practicers can succeed in negotiating it as said by Han Shan in The Secrets of Chinese Meditation. The inborn attachment to an ego can be cut off only after one has reached the seventh stage of bodhisattva development, whereas the inborn clinging to dharma still remains in and above the eighth stage, for the seventh consciousness has its unclean and clean characteristics. The unclean one is wiped out in the seventh stage when the name of store consciousness is dropped and replaced by that of pure consciousness which can now be transmuted into the Absolute. However, the Seventh Consciousness still remains and clings to the Absolute as the object aimed at. This is the subtle attachment to Dharma. Hence the Buddha says, The idea that Bodhi mind is created after the samsaric mind has been annihilated pertains to samsara. For this clinging to the Absolute that can be attained also implies the duality of subject and object, that is, attachment to Dharma. Only after this last attachment has been cut off can enlightenment be realized. These two coarse and subtle attachments do not go beyond the eighth consciousness, and it's created by aggregates, the breaking up of which is the aim of the teaching in this sutra. This sermon deals with basic ignorance caused by the first dim thought of self-awareness as subject and its counterpart, dull emptiness, as object. The dimness so created by mind's separateness is called primordial darkness by non-Buddhist philosophers in the East and is the origin of creation according to the Buddhist teaching, which then explains the three subtle causes of unenlightenment, basic ignorance, subject and object, and its six course conditions, knowledge, responsiveness, attachment, assigning names to objects, karmic activity, and suffering. These six conditions result in the manifestation of different forms, such as the world and living beings in the store consciousness. Here begins the law of continuity, that of the physical world resting on the four wheels of wind, water, metal, and space, which spring from the illusion thus created, that of living beings of the four types of birth, and that of karmic retribution caused by carnality, killing and stealing, the three cardinal conditions of birth and death. The Buddha orders the 25 enlightened ones in the assembly to disclose the various means by which they have attained enlightenment, so that others can learn something from them. After their statements of their realization by means of the six sense data, six sense organs, six consciousnesses, and seven elements of fire, earth, water, wind, space, consciousness, and perception, the world honored one asks Manjushri for his opinion on these 25 methods. Manjushri praises Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva for the latter's method by means of the organ of hearing, which is the most suitable for human beings. The Buddha then teaches the assembly, the Sharangama Mantra, and rituals for avoiding all obstructions on the path to enlightenment. The Buddha goes on to explain why living beings are caught in the net of samsara through the twelve types of birth and how to escape by practicing the fifty-five gradual stages of bodhisattva development to realize complete enlightenment. As asked by Ananda, he described the realms of hells, the ten realms each of hungry ghosts, animals, human beings, and seers, the six deva realms of desire, the eighteen deva realms of form, the four deva realms beyond form, and the four realms of titans. Before the meeting ends, the Buddha warns the assembly against fifty mental states caused by the five aggregates, which hinder the practice of dharma. These states should be recognized by all students in their meditation, and cases are known of those having visions of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas who, by clinging to them, fell into heresy and thereby returned to samsara.